Welcome guys to MicroCode and today we are going to learn about authentication and authorization in SP.NET Core. So I'm going to show you how to uh, authorize users and uh, restrict some access to certain pages in a web uh, application. So I'm using Visual Studio 2022 so I'll create a new project. And then we are going to use SP.NET Core web app model view controller template. Then uh, let's call our applic application authentic authentication authentication. Then we're going to use .NET seven. Then on authentication type, use individual uh, accounts. So we are creating a simple uh, web, uh, web application for logging in and registration. So our, our application will uh, create. So as you can see, it has created a simple uh, web app. So we have the controllers and the areas. So to begin with, let's create a uh, let's scaffold identity. So we are going to use SP.NET Core identity to demonstrate this. So so we'll add new, then a uh, new item. Sorry, so let's say add, add, then we can say scaffold. So click on the new scaffolded item, then choose identity, then I click on the identity, then add. So it is able to install some nuggets and we will be able to choose some pages. Yes, that is it. So we'll choose a uh, confirm email page, forgot password, login, logout, uh, register, reset password, uh, access denied, can uh, resend email, we can use another one, which other one can we use, confirm email change, uh, reset password and register confirmation. Then on the uh, data context, uh, click on the drop down, then select application DB context, then add. So it will install uh, some nuggets and generate uh, our default pages. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Uh, comment down below in case you need certain clarifications. And uh, you can even uh, recommend uh, any video that you will want us to post. So it has created our pages. So if you see on the identity, we have the pages, then account. So all the pages that we selected are now here. So if we can just launch our application. You can see this is our application. Uh, we have the login and uh, registration. So if you click registration, you are able to add a email, a password and confirm password. Then there is a login page for uh, email, login and password. So if you come back here, there is something that uh, our scaffolded uh, process has done. So if you come to program.cs, you will see we have already uh, our application DB context registered and we have our connection string. Then um, on our app settings, we need to define our database. You see we have the default connection and we have the database connection. So I'll paste one of my connections. So I'll take this. So I'll replace with this one. So we'll be using SQL Express to demonstrate this. So I have my desktop uh sql express then our, our our database will be our database will be authentication authentication so we'll create this database so we launch we launch our sql Then database, so you can create a new database here. 
call it authentication. So let's get back to our database, confirm that it is the correct one. Trusted server, uh, trusted connection is true, allow multiple active results set, true, trust server certificate is true. So, if you come back here, so our connection name is already defined here. So, uh, that is it. So, the next thing that we need to do now is to apply migration. So, if you can see on our database, we don't have any tables. So, we need to apply migrations. So, if you also come to our data, application DB context, everything is defined and uh, um, our initial migrations has been uh, generated automatically. So, the only thing that we need to do is to come to tools, nugget package manager, then you just do uh, update database. Update database. Then press enter. So it will create our connections. Then if you come to uh, tables, refresh, you're able to see all the tables. You have the EF core history. Then claims, uh, roles, user claims, user logins, users, and user tokens. So we all have those fields. So we are set to now uh, demonstrate. So if we just uh, click the uh, launch our application, then we can be able to register a user. So we can just say it admin, then we provide our password. And mean at 2030, then register. So it has registered. Then you can confirm the email. So we have not configured the email, but if you if we configure, then you'll be able to see the confirmation email. So for now, you'll just click confirm. Then it will be able to tick that button. So we have a. So we can uh, select this. You see. So you can see we have our user. Uh, username, uh, email, uh, the password is hashed, our security stamp, current stamp, so all those has been uh, defined. So we can now log in to our application. So if we just click login, we provide our email, then we try to log in. So it is logged in. So you can see here. It is saying hello admin at gmail.com. So it has already uh, uh, logged into our application. So that is now authentication. So, so let's see the authorization bit of our application. So assuming we have another page, so let's create another controller. We call it students. Let's create a, a read and write actions. Then we can call this student controller. student controller so on our student controller come to our, our views here then let's create another folder called students students then i want us to paste to copy one of the index page here and then paste it here on our students folder. So these, yes. So here we can say welcome to students page. And you can say, you can say this is the students page so once you have done that you can confirm this to students once you have done that so that is fine so we can launch our application then we can see if we can access the student page so you can see you are still logged in so if we try to type in students here student 
it will redire redirect us to our students page. You see, we have the student welcome to student page. This is the student page, and we are still logged in. So if we also log out, then we confirm that we can access students, students. You can see welcome to student. We can still access the student page while we are not logged in. So we don't want to allow that. So what we need to do, come to program dossiers. Then at the top here, you see we have use authorization, app dot use authorization. So we need to add something else here. We say app dot use authentication. So after we have done that, <clears throat> come to our students dot login on the index. Then here annotate with authorize. So after we have done that, we can uh, try to access our application. Then uh, put in a student. So you can see it is not accessing our page. It has redirected us to a login page. So if we try to log in, You see, after we have logged in, it took us to welcome to, to students page. So if we click home, we are still under home and we are still logged in. If we try to pass in students here, you see it is taking us to students page. So it has actually authorized. So if we log out, we try to access it again. It is taking us to... Uh, a logging page so register you can also register another employee another staff or even a user admin 2030 admin i will say so let's so we can confirm so login so if we come to our application uh, database if we refresh, you can see we have our passwords. So then we can log in. It's already logged in. You can see another user. And you can still access now our students controller. So we have been able to see how you uh, authentication and authorization in sp.net co. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, watching our videos, and comment down below in case you need any assistance. See you in our next video.